Hey, my name is Tucker Krause and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Discovery Silver Corp because they just came out with a preliminary economic assessment just actually yesterday when I'm recording this or two days ago when you're seeing this. Yeah, sorry when I was making this video, I was also coming up right to the end of my account to 12 and Econ 12 courses for school and so I was working on getting the final projects done for those so sadly the video had to be delayed. I'm doing my best to keep a weekly schedule for you guys though, alright? So I can finally do a fair value assessment for them and all that kind of stuff and I've been interested in these guys for a while, I just wanted to wait till I could properly value the company so here we are and let's see what they look like so let's get right into the video. So Discovery Silver trades with the ticker DSV on the Toronto Venture Stock Exchange or TESVSF on over-the-counter exchange. The over-the-counter ones are always so confusing, you know. $1.74 Canadian per share or $1.36 US per share with a mark of a $565 million Canadian dollars or $447 million US dollars. And they have a great price per ounce here. Actually, this, this is the best price per ounce of any precious metal junior I have actually done a video on. So at 95 cents per ounce in Canadian and 75 cents per ounce in US dollars. And this is only their silver. This does not include their gold or lead or zinc. So in some ways it's even better than this, but let's keep moving on. So the max stock chart here doesn't tell us a whole much because we can see here that's been delisted multiple times. And obviously there's a whole lot of share dilution and stuff like that that went on here so this chart basically meaningless we can look here at the six month chart and we can see over the last about six months here well that's you know it's a six month chart that would make sense good job me really smart um but we can see here that when we go down just over the last couple months it's just been consolidation i guess well not even consolidation you know it's just been horrible and that goes for all the precious metal stocks they've just been getting beaten up all summer and fall and lots of them yes we have seen a slight resurgence of recent but it's kind of started to pull back again but again i'm no, I don't do two yay. I just like looking at a quick chart, but I cannot tell you if this is good or bad. I don't know how candlesticks read, so you know what? The line looks simpler to me. Okay, guys. But um, let's move on here to some snippets I took out of the presentation. So we can see here their Cordero project is at the PEA stage, and there's silver, zinc, lead, and gold in there, and it's located in Mexico. Oh, I hit my wall. But we can see there's a whole bunch of other mines, right? Like First Majestic we see here, one of their mines and things like that, all surrounded. So it's a heavy silver mining district, which is, of course, a good thing. And they have over $75 million of cash in balance. Well, that's in Canadian dollars. Now, the capital structure is why I got originally interested in this company. Not this stuff, but this. On 25% by Eric Sprott, 10% by Insiders, 30% by institution, 35% by retail. So, but mainly, I love that really high insider ownership, right? 5 to 10%, that's what I really like to see. But 25% owned by Xbox, that's insane. That's what got me interested in the first place. And now that we're to the PE stage, I can actually value it. And even when we go down here just to the capital structure itself, it's not too bad. 325 million shares outstanding is definitely a bit high for my liking. But compared to their mark cap being about $500 million, that's not horrendous. And they don't have a whole bunch of warrants and options outstanding. So we don't have to worry about that kind of thing too much. So just kind of zooming in on their mine here, or well, project. It is 100% owned. They have 35,000 hectares. There's local infrastructure all build up. They plan to make an open pit mine. Of course, we saw there's a whole bunch of other silver mines here and all that good stuff. Here's kind of the timeline they're going to go through with on the project. So they want to, they have the PA. We have just came out with this kind of stuff right here. And they're working on getting a pre-feasibility study for the end of next year. Alongside next year, they want to begin permitting and getting, doing more. Or drilling and working on a full feasibility study and so they say in 2023 they'll have their feasibility study and decide if they want to begin construction all right so this just goes over their production plans and we can see over here it like most mines right ramps up and then near the end of course they're producing a lot less as they're emptying out the mine that's pretty standard and we see an aisc here for silver equivalent ounces of 12 dollars and 34 cents per silver equivalent ounce Though when we go to the project overview here, I uh, converted all this kind of stuff and we see it's actually $12.49 per actual silver ounce. And so they have 595 million ounces of silver on the ground. That's just, that is massive. That's one of the, well, that's the biggest, like I said earlier, of the Precious Metals Jr. I've looked at so far. And then royalty, I'm not sure. I didn't see any mentions of a royalty. And so, and slash A there. But um, when we keep going, there is... One cost to this really massive deposit is that it is very low grade at only 16 grams per ton with a high capex of 368 million in initial capex and 704 million in total capex. 
Then, the, like we said before, $12.49 in OPEX per silver ounce. And then they expect to be under construction for two years and to produce for 16 years. And again, this is a brand new PEA released November 30th. So yesterday is me recording this, like I already said. No need to repeat myself this much. So the mines in Mexico, 30% tax rate, open pit mine. So looking at the rest of their mine here. So on silver, like we just went over before, 595 million ounces, low grade low grade i mean because these are low grade i'm also gonna guess these are low grade but i'm not sure what if this is good or bad for zinc and lead but i know these are really low grade for silver and gold now there's only a little bit of gold here with 1.6 million ounces but we have a whole ton of zinc here with 13,000 million pounds and 5,600 million pounds of lead and so yeah very low grade but a massive deposit so you kind of have to make up for that massive deposit with the low grade it's a trade-off here and they do have other several other early stage exploration projects that are yet to have a mineral resource estimate so of course we can see this possibly expand in the future and they plan to produce 2,862 million pounds of zinc 1,991 million pounds of lead and about 0.173 million ounces of gold and about 230 million ounces of silver now let's move on to the dcf here and see how they do with producing all that stuff so at current spot price they're they are just flat out not profitable and i should note this is of course like the usual 50 percent capex and opex inflation with a 10 percent discount rate so their conserved numbers combine with the fact that i'm going to be using current zinc lead and gold pricing and so we can then look at 30 dollars silver they are then still substantially overvalued though they are profitable and moving up to 34 dollars silver we see they are fair value and we see they're over a triple once we hit 50 dollars silver so you know what that does make sense right this is a project that is absolutely massive and very expensive so they need a high price of silver to compensate for that so their revenue will be insane but they also are going to need a high silver price to maintain decent profit margins that a very high grade silver mine you know the revenue will of course be lower because it's smaller but with the grade being so much higher their profit margin will be bigger and they'll be able to get fair value easier that way or be more undervalued easier that way i should say i'm don't i'm phrasing this really badly but again just massive project so it's going to need very high pricing to go through but if it does if we manage to achieve high enough pricing this guy this guy will make a whole lot of cash flow and it does look pretty good here with that share structure and all that kind of thing so overall it looks pretty good i'll say that for sure but of course i always recommend you do your own research all that kind of thing you can go check out some of my other silver junior videos i've done and that kind of thing anyways i hope you enjoyed the video Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.